Hello, everybody. Yes, and there's some visits. Most importantly, 10-year uh, veterans of VidCon, there are some aura brushes. Yeah. 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 Huge thanks to our first ever sponsor. Aura brushes remains a staple of my bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing cleans your tongue like an aura brush. <laughs> I mean, they were, they were our, we, so we had a uh, aura brush, it was the first people who came in, Cisco. Yes. Cisco. Thank you, Cisco. Yeah. <laughs> company, but they owned Flipcam back then, and they did a special VidCon branded Flipcam that I would pay one. a lot of money for. I have one. Yeah. 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 People are like, I got one in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Thank you all for being here. Um, I'm going to start crying, which is on brand, but... <laughs> This is, uh, this is just like the highlight of, of, of my VidCon and also kind of the highlight of the last five years. It's really, really wonderful that you're all here. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I should be an HD in everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's a show hard to It's just a show hard to say. It's just
this is water. I think he's trying, he's trying to teach you how to say I watch a lot of YouTube videos. Like that. <laughs> um, Welsh. Uh, so, the first person who ever... Oh, I think that's the very valuable Slip King. <laughs> the first person who bought... Uh, uh, so I, when we when we started when we decided we were going to do VidCon, we uh, put tickets on sale, and then uh, a few hours later we had sold two, and that was a people. Yeah, I was very very scared, scared. at that moment because we just we decided not to sell a lot of hotel rooms that we were going to have to pay for one way or another. And uh, God, that was such a bad day. <laughs> I forgot about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was rough. I, I can still picture the taco restaurant I was in while frantically refreshing and being like, anybody else gonna buy it? Um, thank you first. I guess I should say this, like that you took the risk on the first bid comments uh, or the second. That's like amazing. Uh, and second, the first person who bought one of those tickets, Martha Stroud, uh, was not able to Yeah. Amazing. Oh, look, there's a picture up here. We'll, we'll hold up this picture. You might recognize Mario. Uh, also, you might recognize Julie. They're twins. Um, and uh, and she was, they were not able to come this year because of family emergency. Very frustrating uh, for them. So I wanted to make a video where we all just say thank you guys. I'm going to put my microphone down. What, what are we going to say? I'm going to say thank you, Martha. We miss you. Can we say Martha and Julie? No! <laughs> she, didn't, she wasn't the first person to buy she was, it. She was literally like fifth. <laughs> and then say thank you, Martha and Julie. And then say thank you, Julie and Martha, so that nobody feels left out. <laughs> so on three, thank you, Martha and Julie, followed by thank you, Julie and Martha. <laughs> Are we ready? One, two, three. Thank you, Martha and Julie! Thank you, Julie and Martha! Perfect! Other than a thank everyone did great. We're going to do it thank both you. ways, so that you know that we're not putting anyone in preferential order, even though um, one of you actually did buy the ticket first. <laughs> So it seems like everybody should be here by now. I don't know how it's gonna work though. Can you tell? Okay. There are gonna be two people. God, what a great t-shirt. That's a great how do I get that t-shirt? Sounds a little bit. So is it do they lean right or left? The story's called Little Comrade. I'm going giving them my credit card info. <laughs> all right, so there's going to be two group photos. We're going to do one of the people who've been to all ten years, and we're going to do another one of everyone who showed up at the reunion. So, um, so we're going to do a little icebreaker and then um, break off into the into the group photo. We're going to take it outside of the hallway, and then we'll come on back in here, and we've got some fun stuff planned for the rest of the hour. Um, so go ahead yeah. and take it off. So, yeah, so the icebreaker, the extent of the icebreaker is just asking everyone, okay, how many years have you been to VidCon? If you've been to one VidCon, will you raise your hand? Uh, one. We're here. We got it. We did it. So we need two good pass. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight.
Can I head out? Yeah, let's go. Right. Um, oh, um, Sarah's coming with us. Emily Wigley. Where's Sarah? four-minute video. The more I filmed, it, it occurred to me that this is not the purpose of coming to VidCon. You don't come to VidCon to show people videos. You come to VidCon to talk to them in person, in real life. That's the whole thing. And very early on, uh, I don't know who came up with this, but it was genius. They put couches on the stage at VidCon to make it feel like good old-fashioned storytelling. So, Here's a little bit of good old-fashioned storytelling, a little bit of high technology. Um, <laughs> in the old days, we told stories by sitting around rocks 
this is Homer uh, talking to some gods. Oh, look, here's the Gutenberg Press. This is a very sensitive machine. That's the Gutenberg Press. Uh, 1439 was invented. Uh, another way to tell stories, and it was even greater than sitting around telling stories because you didn't have to deal with people. You just read the thing <laughs> so to understand what the person was trying to communicate. Then there was the radio. This, the last century was amazing. We had the radio. We had the TV. That's my childhood TV there. That's my brother, Gabriel. In that wild peanuts uh, sweatshirt. We had TVs. We had radios. And later in that century, we had computers and the internet. This is Tim Bernays-Lee's computer, the one that he used when he was developing uh, HTML. So, the year is 2001. A man named Josea Frank sends out an email to his friends containing a little flash video. And if you punch the right button and use the video, it would tell you how to dance these various things. He's doing Ride the Pony in that shot. This is 2001, though. Um, People were starting to use videos, using the internet to transmit videos. He did this mostly by email, but it became a, a viral hit at the time. Then there was this guy. Now listen carefully to this. Um, the, first, the very first YouTube video was a penis joke. Woo! Shocking. Oh, he can't hear him. That's all right. He's describing the size of the elephant's trunk. <laughs> Did you know that elephants have very, very long trunks? That's what he's saying in that video. Then there's this guy, again. This is his first, and if the sound doesn't come through, that's all right. I can paraphrase. It's say Frank. It's his first uh, video for the show, uh, done in March of 2006. And he's drinking coffee, and he's saying hello. Hello, drink a little coffee. Hello, hi. And then he tells us the date. And that was, that was pretty much it. Now, Zay Frank spoke at the first uh, VidCon. And it's a great quote, what he said. I think it's still true today. We don't make or watch videos for money or subscribers or views. Some of us do. But in, back at that time, we were not doing it for money or subscribers or views. Money didn't exist at the time. YouTube wasn't paying anybody. <laughs> we watched them to feel what it's like to be other people. And we make them, we make those videos to let others feel what it's like to be us. I hear, I hear Zay. Well, that's not Zay. <laughs> it's not mine. <laughs> Now, two, the year is 2006. Oh, who is this? Geriatric. It's geriatric, 1927. The same year my dad was born. Um, Mr. Oakley was a, a British bloke, and he started out his first video with a, a jam. It was a, it was a blues jam before he even spoke. And he goes on to say in this video, I'll, again, I'll paraphrase, imagine a British voice. <laughs> oh... I've been watching YouTube videos, and I've become a bit addicted to them. <laughs> and I thought I'd give it a, a go and make some videos to show, to show you kids. And then there was this. <laughs> Hi! Oh, oh. Uh, he's, he's coming back. That's Lonely Girl 15. But they both appeared in the, YouTube, in the year 2006. And before you knew it, these two... Uh, these two videographers uh, had amassed 10,000 subscribers. And by the end of 2007, they had 100,000 subscribers. It was unheard of. And a company called Google said, hmm, 100,000 subscribers. Hi, guys. Oh, oh, yes! So this is the first video vlog. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a company named Google bought YouTube for $1.65 billion. They said, this is something. Something that's worth investing this sort of money in. <laughs> this is the way I felt when I heard that. <laughs> and then, in, as, as Hank said, uh, January 1st, 2007, this happened.
off. <laughs> and then um, Hank and John uh, had a few uh, response videographers, and I was one of them. I'm Secret Brother Tom. This is my last one. Oh, hi, Hank. Hi, John. <laughs> well, it's December 31st. Congratulations, you made it. <laughs> Thank you. By the way, I still have 250 subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, this is Hank announcing something special. And I are here to tell you some very exciting news. And what was that exciting news? The exciting news was that they were inviting everybody to bid. So, we came from sitting around on rocks telling stories to this. Uh, the first year was pretty cool. Uh, this is the 150 nerd fiber hug. Stuff a little bit. In a big hot tent at the Hyatt in Los Angeles. <laughs> This is one of our star volunteers. VidCon uh, had a lot of volunteers the first few years. And Jessica Gardner, she was... Uh, That's like her now. <laughs> great. Her, her channel was called, you can still actually see the videos, Nerd Fighters International. They got together people from all over the world and exchanged videos, much like Hank and John did. But Jessica was a star. This is Jessica. Filling one of those damn VidCon <laughs> bags. We filled one year almost 20,000 bags. And Jessica was very fast, so <laughs> she did more than anybody else. And that VidCon also included a lightsaber and uh, other device between, say, Frank and Frank. This is not VidCon number one, but this is Martha Stroud, the first person to buy a ticket uh, at VidCon. We miss you. We miss you, Martha. Yeah. Now, I, I've met a lot of friends, and I miss them terribly. This is uh, Linovich um, Arthur, a Dutch um, soccer fan and nerd fighter. Uh, we were watching the World Cup. This is Leslie Datsis. She, uh, she had a wonderful thing. It was totally off the program. She would invite people to sit on a grassy knoll and tell stories to each other, which is fantastic. And then there's this guy. The Orpress guy. He, he was amazing. He was like the only booth in the Expo Hall. That, DFTBA and Orabrush were the only booths in the Expo Hall, the first one. I really miss him. But then there's the couch. So this is the original VidCon couch. Uh, the new ones look really modern, kind of without character. I don't know where that couch is, but... Anyways, there it is. <laughs> but there were also couches in the hotel, and we would sit in the couches and tell stories and have a great time. And you know what? It didn't really matter if you were a fancy dancy creator or if you were a person looking at the fancy dancy creator's stuff. Everybody sat on the couch and talked in that first VidCon. That was something very special. All right, where does that bring us? Here's Homer again. Um, when you really think about it, even though we've gone through all this technological change, this is still what we're doing. We're just telling stories to each other. And the couch to me, by the way, what is this about the couch? I tried to get a couch for this stage. <laughs> and I was told by the powers that be it just wouldn't happen. But we make, you know, life goes on. Life makes, uh, life makes its way. And so uh, we decided to do, imagine this as a couch. But it hasn't changed a bit. In, in 10,000 years of storytelling, the very best storytelling is always done in real life. And that's what VidCon is all about. Final comment. Uh, I, I said I've missed a lot of things. But it's especially important to remember the reason why we all come back to VidCon is so that we can make new memories and miss those a little bit later on. Thank you all.
That's that was a beautiful talk, and I think it uh, really covers some of the importance of the, you know what we're all doing here. Is it is uh, it's culture. This is this is 21st century like digital culture, uh, and I think that uh, you know having gone to these for the past 10 years, uh, it, I don't know. It means a lot every time I come back uh, and realize like I'm part of a bigger thing than just myself. That is a hugely uh, motivating and exciting thing to be able to do. So Andy, Andy, yeah, who are we? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tom. Hi. Yeah, that's Tom. My name's Anthony. Um, I started a channel in 2007, uh, and uh, I've been doing the Internet Creators Guild for the past uh, year. Uh, and I previously worked as head of creative track experience for Bitcom, um, which is a really exciting opportunity. Um, yeah, do we want to go down and introduce everyone else? Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Steve. Hi. Um, I started making videos on YouTube at the end of 2008. Um, formerly under the username Fizzy Lyman, now mostly making educational content under the username The Listener's Guy. Um, and the reason that I was selected for the panel is because I shelled out so much money to come here. <laughs> <laughs> mostly, mostly as a creator. Um, the, uh, yeah, the only other panel that I've been on is the first uh, Less Than Famous panel. Woo! Um, so <laughs> um, yeah. I'm here just because I love VidCon so much, and I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it. Hi, I'm Monica. Um, this is my first VidCon not working behind the scenes. Um, I'm finally attending. It's great. It's really great on this side. Uh, and the way I got into it was um, I was making videos with my sister, a lot of vlogbrothers. Um, and I started working for John and Hank. And they started VidCon, and they were like, hey, Monica, you have uh, theater experience, right? You want to be our stage manager? <laughs> that was like a week before VidCon, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> um, and then it just kind of snowballed from there, and here we are. Yeah. So I think we wanted to ask um, on this panel, you know, what are some, some favorite, like, unscripted moments? Some things that, uh, you know, things that, that have happened over the years. Uh, okay, I have one. I have one. Um, so one of my jobs over the years has been uh, interfacing with sponsors, and I was working very closely with Kia when they would bring the car in. Uh, <laughs> and um, so they brought this car, and George Watsky is doing his concert. He oh walks over to the car platform, jumps on top of the car, <laughs> which I've been told if it gets a smudge on it, it will be my head. <laughs> Proceeds to leap off of it into the crowd, which was glorious. You know, probably a thousand, two thousand people were filming it. And went up on YouTube. Everybody loved it, and I'm internally just screaming. Like, I'm gonna lose my job. I'm gonna, you know, have to pay for a car. Uh, um, and then so I met Kia the next day, and they're like, "Hey, there's a dent. Where did this dent come from?" I was like. Well, let me show you this YouTube video. <laughs> and I was like, see how many views it has? Oh, look, here's 10 more. Oh, look, there's 100 more videos. Look how much exposure your car is getting. And I looked at it and I'm like, I bet we can make that out of time. <laughs> so that was my favorite moment, was when they, they said it was okay. <laughs> So, my favorite unscripted moment, um, I don't know, was it at a concert, I think? It was like one of the evening concerts, it was just a weirdly emotional moment. Um, the Gregory Brothers like came up on stage, and um, they were performing, and I don't remember if they were even taking requests, or if someone just spontaneously shouted from the audience, they were like, PLAY DOUBLE RAINBOW! <laughs> and they kind of looked at each other like, How do you know about that? I just put that out yesterday. Um, and then pulled together this like amazing performance of the song that was like just perfect in every way and it just became a weirdly emotional moment for everybody in the audience. I just remember like linking arms with all my friends and swaying back and forth and um, just hearing that every year is like, I don't know, the makes me cry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I feel like it's, it's like extra special for those of us who were there that first time. <laughs> it's, it's on the internet. <laughs> you can watch it. Yeah. <laughs> Everything is fine. <laughs>
pass the mic around a little bit and, and have other people share uh, their stories of, uh, of, of VidCon's past. Um, any, any fun anecdotes that anyone feels like sharing? Hank? You've had your turn, Hank. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to you in a second. <laughs> the elevator voice. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Sponsoring this, but they weren't then. <laughs> and he uh, he agreed, and we um, we show up, and I had talked to Hank a few times on the phone, and um, Hank we show up, and Hank's just like none of the bags are done, Every, and so I was like, hey, we we took our team and we started helping you fill up the bags. For, uh, <laughs> But it was a really cool sponsorship because Hank also I was like, can we put stuff on every single pillow of every <laughs> attendee? And he's like, no, they say you can. And I was like, if, if you do it, we'll, we'll sponsor for this much. And, it, and somehow he got it done. That was never, ever done. <laughs> ever since. Or before, I don't know what you had to do to get into every single room 
and put stuff in it, but that was not normal. <laughs>
You can get the mic back. <laughs> if you can pry it from my cool. <laughs> <laughs> so that is that is basically the time that we have. We have one more special surprise related to your anecdote. Um, <laughs> The one about unscripted moments? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally unscripted. Totally unscripted thing. Okay, very, very spontaneous. Yeah, we didn't plan it at all. Not even a little bit of planning. Um, yeah, so if, if we could make this the signal, we do have a, a gift. <laughs> Yes, I'm here. Can you get it rolling? Oh, sure. We have a video. I'll just, I'll borrow this for a moment. Hi, everyone. I'm, By the I'm way. Evan. Tom, you want to say something? It's all because of Julian. Thank you, 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 Julian. I'm Evan. This is my brother, Andrew, and, and my brother, Michael, and we're um, collectively known as, you might guess, as the Gregory Brothers. We've been to every VidCon, but at, at the first one, just a couple days prior to attending VidCon number one, we put out this video called The Double Rainbow Song. And then we had this totally new, unique experience to us, which was walking by other people's hotel rooms, seeing them watching our video. <laughs> and then just as it was related, somebody shouted out the request while we were on stage talking about something totally different. And it, it was revolutionary to us that, that these other creators and fans of YouTube had already seen the thing that we just made. And we practiced it. We were ready to play. <laughs> <laughs> we're not morons. So, so it's, it's become a big kind of anthem to, to us, for sure, and, and, and the fact that people that have been here for a, a long time have embraced in that same way really means a lot to us. So, um, so thank you, thank you for that. But we thought maybe we could close the hour by playing the song. Uh, this this version of Double Rainbow, I think, is could actually be captured by a camera. So we'll, we'll, try to, we'll try to raise the raise the rafters. Thanks. No jinx. I remember that was the first video we had done that wasn't. Uh, like a new politics video, it was like more of a meme or a viral video as they used to call it. And uh, <laughs> uh, I think it was the first video we had that like hit a million in just like a week. Did we publish and it like, during the No, it was before. It was just before, but then we got there and we were trying to email with Yosemite Bear like at the same time. And I remember like people were like, are you going to play that song? And I was like, you know this song exists? Like, the other videos were so esoteric and having to do with politics, and I never thought somebody would sing it in a room, and now we're singing songs about turtle fences every year. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for giving us that. That, that day down here performing, like, auto to the News 4 on, like, a ukulele, which is very difficult. <laughs> I'm going to call an audible here. I think this experience is going to be best for all concerned. If maybe we only use the mic for the guitar and not for our choices, and if everyone in the back row just moves up to the front four or five rows here of the, of, of the room, we can just sing to you with our human voices. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
more time, guys. Let's do it. Double rainbow all the way across the sky. Yeah, yeah. So intense. Double rainbow all the way across the sky. Wow, wow. Oh, my God. Look at that rainbow. <laughs> that is the baddest rainbow that I've ever seen. Thank you guys. Any, any closing remarks? Yes. Um, <laughs> this is Somebody's got to take charge. Um, we'd like to sign this for Martha. So everybody who is willing, and I hope everybody comes up, let's sign it for Martha, and we're going to roll it up and send it to her.
mixed up. That's still a good or not. Hi, Martha. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 